Okay, I thought I'd do some quick tips on uh, what's helped me lambing this year. I'm afraid the sheep are going a bit ballistic, so I think they're going to be fed. So uh, when they start blaring, I hope you can still hear me. But uh, I think the first thing i say is about being organised. So this year, I knew my dates when the sheep had gone to the top. And uh, when they finished going to the top, so I knew my kind of window of uh, opportunity with lambing. And um, it was really good as well because we had the sheep in really good condition. We flushed them uh, on some fresh grass and a load of them went to the top all at once, which meant that my lambing has been, it's been quite close together. So that's been really, really good. Um, the other thing I did as well, you can see on this sheep here, a number of the sheep before they had lambs. So last year, I did it kind of as we used to do it. We used to lamb in the shed. Um, January, February time, and we used to number them once they'd land. So you you you'd go through and you number a load all at once, one, two, three, you know, carry on going. I did tried that last year out in the field. It just didn't work. So I had uh, lambs. I could catch the lambs easy, but I couldn't catch some of the sheep. So we um, so you'd have lots of lambs numbered up. The sheep wouldn't match in. I couldn't get near to some of the sheep uh, once they land. It could a bit wild sometimes. You don't want to chase them around too much either. So having them numbered already is really good. Also, if you're uh, checking them at night or whatever, it's much better to kind of look out for a number than it is like a, a marking on a, an ear or something. All mine are white face views, so they all they all look quite similar. And uh, two in the morning, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to find one with certain coloured tags or something like that. So looking for a number makes it much easier. You can think, oh, I think number four is going to lamb, and then and you go and find her. Or you can also keep an eye on them much better as well. That one's lame. See what she's like tomorrow she needs catching and, and sorting out so i think that really really helps and uh, i've been really pleased with cumbering them like that and then also what i did i took it one step further i made myself a, a blackboard i uh, got some chalk i don't know if you can see that very well i got columns so the first column saw the numbers of the ewes then i've got how many lambs they've had i've got if the lambs have been castrated or, and ringed and then also any notes so if they had an assisted delivery if they prolapsed, um, if they lost a quarter, something like that, I can go on the notes and then I can sort the flock out later in the year. So if they lose a quarter, then I'll get rid of that you because she's not much good to me for the year after. And otherwise you're kind of perpetuating problems. So that really, really helps. So I feel, I've actually felt quite organized for once in my life. So it's been, uh, it's been quite good. The other thing is as well, so is making sure you're, you're ready for it as well. So having the equipment, so um, night times and stuff like that, uh, What's it say there? Night times. So I've got the torches ready. And I've been going the rules of three. So three is three is two, two is one, one is none kind of thing. So I've got um, some LED lights. So I've had got this floodlight, which is great if you're trying to lamb a you. You've got it um, lay out on the side. You can have the light shine and not have to hold it. We've also got this kind of mechanics inspection lamp, which has been absolutely brilliant. It's got three different phases. The good thing about both of these is they've got magnets on it. A really cool feature. So if I'm in the shed, if I actually manage to get the ewe back here to lamb her, then I can uh, clip them on, not have to hold them and position them, and I've got light. And also that, that floodlight lights up this whole shed, pointed at the roof, gives really good light. But I think the disadvantage of LEDs is they go out with no warning whatsoever. And the last thing I want to do is down the bottom of that field checking the sheep at two in the morning, and the lights go out. And it has happened. So I always make sure I carry three lights. So I carry those two, and even my phone, or I've got some kind of mag light esque type lights you know led laser and all that kind of stuff which are really good battery powered ones i don't want to use them as much as the rechargeables but just gives me that other kind of option and small lights fit in your pocket nice and easy so that's really good um the other thing is making sure you get the right clothing i mean april's been awesome this year we've had brilliant weather so i've been really lucky that way but uh, i've got rain hats you know waterproof trousers well i've actually got like a, a kind of what they call them, like a um, overall kind of waterproof overall things. So they've been really good. If if it's wet, um, you don't want to. I've got overalls I wear a lot as well. It's much easier than getting changed your whole set of clothes. And my wife doesn't want me smelling like a sheep all the time. So I take the overalls off and uh, chuck them in the wash. Um, so the other thing as well is is this little shed. It's kind of essential to lambing. Although I'm lambing outside, this shed's quite essential. So if you get one that's sick or uh, needs attention. Or just if it's born in the drizzle, I like to bring them inside. I mean, I'm not running the New Zealand system here, so I like to make sure that they, they're kind of cared for. They can um, they can come in and uh, be looked after. So I've got a couple of sheep in here at the morning. This is a single that's born this morning. This is an assisted delivery. The lamb's head was quite swollen, so I brought them inside. And they spend a couple of days in here. And then this one, number four, she had two lambs. 
didn't take to one of her own lambs, so she had to go into an adopter pen for a few days. But she seems to come out. She seems to be fine now. So she'll probably go out today when I feed them uh, later on. The ones inside, I always make sure I straw the pens really well every day. Give them a, a wad of straw each, and then I give them a third of a wad of hay uh, twice a day. And then their corn rations as well, which is like you know, about a pound and a half of oats, a bit of wheat, and um, make sure they got fresh water. The other thing I did this year is I invested in a load of get hurdles, so I bought 10 um, hurdles linked together. I mean, I got lots of old hurdles from when we used to farm, um, me and my dad used to keep sheep. Um, but they're all falling apart, and these ones all linked together really well, so it's been really useful to uh, have easy to link hurdles. And also what I've done, um, the ewes that have lambed are in this big field here, this six acre one here, and then the ones that haven't are in a little two acre one next door. And every night, I get those into an even smaller area, which I call the pig pen. Um, so that at night time, it's really easy for me to come and check. It's like 60, 70 yards away from the house. I can just come out, don't get too cold, and uh, I can check on them. The, uh, but these hurdles have been great in there because what I do is I put four in a line together. I can chew, I can get a U into a corner and pull the gates around. They're light enough, I can pull around and then they link them in. I've got that ewe trapped there, and I can keep an eye on her overnight if she needs to, or I can get her down and, and lamb her there and then. So that's been really, really useful. Um, and the other bit of infrastructure I've got, I've got my dad's old stock box, and that's full of hay and straw and uh, a big bag of oats as well. So it just keeps my supplies close to hand. And uh, I've only got this shed, I have this shed for like a month, a year. Just uh, my neighbour keeps his tractors in it the rest of the time, but luckily he lets me use it. So it's, it's really handy. Um, and then the other thing is like yeah, you know your normal kind of shepherding equipment. So when you've got lambs and stuff running about, I think this is it's not just some twee image. A farmer's crook. You know, this gives me an extra kind of five foot of reach. Really enables me to catch lambs and stuff. I, I, to be honest with you, I can't believe we used to not have one for years and years. I remember we got one in my late teens, twenty, early twenties, and we, we bought both types. You get one for one for the neck and one for the, the back legs on a small lamb. And they're, they're just brilliant. If you need to catch a lamb, that's the only way to do it. You run around anyway, but uh, it makes it so much easier. It's, uh, it's absolutely superb. Um, and then the other bits of equipment that you're going to need for lambing. I keep iodine for doing their uh, umbilical cords. I mean, we used to have a pot, but I find I can't keep a, only dip the whole umbilical cord in, which is better. But I kind of I just knock a pot over. So I have it in a squirty bottle. Um, and just spray it on and that's it's cheaper than using an antibiotic spray and i don't like using antibiotics where i don't have to um the other thing you're gonna i keep big meat these are big meat animals i mean they come with inherent sets of problems unfortunately especially kind of lowland kept so i have to i've got a few of these kicking around i've only had to use one this year and it was a complete success last year i had to use three i think but prolapse harnesses um different years are better or worse for them but having prolapse on this ready for when you need it, but also knowing how to put it on is, is really essential. Um, the other thing I've got, so I've got a few things in here. Obviously having marking spray, so you can mark the lambs up the same as the ewes. Teramycin, foot rot, yeah. If you've got sheep, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to use some uh, purple spray, unfortunately. Um, when they've lambed, the lambs need dealing with, I don't do it immediately, but the next day, Try to castrate them and uh, dot the tails. No one, no one likes castrating lambs, but it's essential. I'm not keeping these lambs that long, but I do keep them for a year normally, and uh, I don't want them tupping their own mums and kind of incest and inbreeding. So that's kind of essential as well. The other thing, which if you're going to be lambing, if you've got more than a few ewes, you're, you're going to you're going to need some of these. No one likes going to a shop and buying a, a, a big long red glove and a, a big jug of lube. But it is essential to to lambing unfortunately and uh, you just have to get over the squeamishness of it actually buying that kind of reminds me of about 18 and I uh, went to a DIY shop and it was a weird time of year it was in the autumn I got chap lips at the time sauntered by some Vaseline I was also tapping some birch trees for um, to make wine so I wanted a length one inch tubing clear tubing about a meter long and then uh, I got walnuts I was cleaning up so I bought some rubber gloves and it's only when I got them on the till and it was all laid out, and the woman serving me looked at me, and she looked at the stuff, and she looked at me, and I, I suddenly realised I basically bought a DIY enema kit um, without realising it. 
that's all I had. I just went bright red. I don't think I've ever been so embarrassed in my life. But uh, yeah, so anyway, it's less embarrassing is buying um, buying your your big red glove and your jug of lube. But the lube's essential. I always carry two or three um, of the gloves in my top pocket, normally in my overalls. I go round. And uh, if you need to, I tell you, one glove just isn't enough. Sometimes some some lambs they they're really slippy. A cord helps as well to tie around their legs to be able to pull them out easier. Um, but having two gloves is, is kind of essential. You, sometimes it's a two-handed job. I mean, that's the trouble. I don't scan the sheep, so the singles are, are fed the same as the doubles, and you get some really big singles. And they do they do need some assistance getting out sometimes. Um, what else have I got? Assist. Um, Oh, and the, uh, my other really essential bit of kit I've got is um, some local shepherds and shepherds I grew up with. I mean, luckily, me and my dad, dad used to keep sheep, so dad's a great um, source of knowledge. I'm always phoning him up and hounding him for kind of advice and stuff. But I've also got some shepherds. I, uh, one used to help us when we uh, used to keep sheep at, at dad's farm, and um, he's a brilliant. He used to keep thousands of sheep, so a great source of knowledge. My dad's best friend, he's, uh, he's really good as well. Very no nonsense um, advice. And there's a guy down the road last year. He came and helped me with one ewe that had a lamb die inside her. Um, you know, these people they're really keen for me to keep sheep. And there's not many younger people. I'm not saying I'm young, but not many younger people keeping sheep. They're really keen to encourage me and help me and uh, give me advice. And uh, yeah, it's, that's that's been key. And this year I've not had to phone people as many times. Just a couple of times. My confidence has grown. It's my this is my first year without having my dad help me. Uh, no, second year lambing where I've not been on the farm, and uh, I think that's kind of yeah, you know, your confidence does grow and it becomes easier. But having these people as a backup is uh, is really key. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's it really. I think that's the long and short of it of what I can think of at the moment. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up. Please share it with your friends. Click subscribe and uh, pop over to my blog. Um, leave a comment. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Bloody bloody bloody. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.